Before we get into today's podcast, I wanted to let you know about a special ebook that's yours to download free today. It's called Five Ways to Connect with God Ancient Practices for Modern Times. It's safe to say that in today's fast paced culture, we're all seeking more rest and less chaos. Only then can we find true connection with our Creator. Five Ways to Connect to God offers five unique spiritual principles to Christians who may be feeling dry when it comes to their prayer life or spiritual fervor. These include practices such as choosing a word for the year, the power of one phrase prayers, and the importance of cultivating thankfulness. Some of these principles are hundreds of years old, yet they offer a fresh way to connect us with the living God. Download your copy of Five Ways to Connect to God by visiting premierinsight.org forward slash resources. That's premierinsight.org slash resources. And now it's time for today's podcast. The Bible in a Year, bringing the Word to life. Father God, as we come to your word today, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly. Amen. Psalm 119, verses 41 to 48. May your unfailing love come to me, Lord, your salvation according to your promise. Then I can answer anyone who taunts me, for I trust in your word. Never take your word of truth from my mouth, for I have put my hope in your laws. I will always obey your law, for ever and ever. I will walk about in freedom, for I have sought out your precepts. I will speak of your statutes before kings, and will not be put to shame, for I delight in your commands, because I love them. I reach out for your commands which I love, that I may meditate on your decrees. 1 Timothy chapter 1 Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the command of God our Saviour, and of Christ Jesus our hope. To Timothy, my true son in the faith. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. As I urged you when I went into Macedonia, stay there in Ephesus, so that you may command certain people not to teach false doctrines any longer, or to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies. Such things promote controversial speculations rather than advancing God's work, which is by faith. The goal of this command is love, which comes from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Some have departed from these and have turned to meaningless talk. They want to be teachers of the law, but they do not know what they are talking about or what they so confidently affirm. We know that the law is good if one uses it properly. We also know that the law is made not for the righteous, but for the lawbreakers and rebels, the ungodly and sinful, the unholy and irreligious, for those who kill their fathers or mothers, for murderers, for the sexually immoral, for those practising homosexuality, for slave traders and liars and perjurers, and for whatever else is contrary to the sound doctrine that conforms to the gospel concerning the glory of the blessed God, which he entrusted to me. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to his service. Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord Jesus was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, from whom I am the worst. 
But for what reason I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the King Eternal, Immortal, Invisible, the only God, be honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. Timothy, my son, I am giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you, so that by recalling them you may fight the battle well, holding on to faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected, and so have suffered shipwreck with regard to the faith. Among them are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan to be taught not to blaspheme. Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 26 to Jeremiah chapter 34 verse 22 I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? Therefore this is what the Lord says, I am about to give this city into the hands of the Babylonians and to Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon who will capture it. The Babylonians who are attacking this city will come in and set it on fire. They will burn it down, along with the houses where the people aroused my anger by burning incense on the roofs to Baal, and by pouring out drink offerings to other gods. The people of Israel and Judah have done nothing but evil in my sight from their youth. Indeed, the people of Israel have done nothing but arouse my anger with what their hands have made, declares the Lord. From the day it was built until now, this city has so aroused my anger and wrath that I must remove it from my sight. The people of Israel and Judah have provoked me by all the evil they have done, they, their kings and officials, their priests and prophets, the people of Judah and those living in Jerusalem. They turned their backs to me and not their faces. Though I taught them again and again, they would not listen or respond to discipline. They set up their vile images in the house that bears my name and defiled it. They built high places for Baal in the valley of Ben-Hinnom to sacrifice their sons and daughters to Molech, though I never commanded, nor did it enter my mind that they should do such a detestable thing and so make Judah sin. You are saying about this city, By the sword, famine, and plague it will be given into the hands of the king of Babylon. But this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, I will surely gather them from all the lands where I banish them in my furious anger and great wrath. I will bring them back to this place and let them live in safety. They will be my people, and I will be their God. I will give them singleness of heart and action, so that they will always fear me, and that all will then go well for them and for their children after them. I will make an everlasting covenant with them, I will never stop doing good to them, and I will inspire them to fear me, so that they will never turn away from me. I will rejoice in doing them good, and will assuredly plant them in this land with all my heart and soul. This is what the Lord says. As I have brought all this great calamity on this people, so I will give them all the prosperity I have promised them. Once more fields will be bought in this land, of which you say it is a desolate waste without people or animals, for it has been given into the hands of the Babylonians. Fields will be bought for silver, and deeds will be signed, sealed and witnessed in the territory of Benjamin, in the villages around Jerusalem in the towns of Judah, and in the towns of the hill country, of the western foothills, and of the Negev, because I will restore their fortunes, declares the Lord. Jeremiah chapter 33 
while Jeremiah was still confined in the courtyard of the God, the word of the Lord came to him a second time. This is what the Lord says, He who made the earth, the Lord who formed it and established it, the Lord is his name. Call to me, and I will answer you, and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says about the houses in this city and the royal palaces of Judah that have been torn down to be used against the siege ramps and the sword in the fight with the Babylonians. They will be filled with the dead bodies of the people I will slay in my anger and wrath. I will hide my face from this city because of all its wickedness. Nevertheless, I will bring health and healing to it. I will heal my people and will let them enjoy abundant peace and security. I will bring Judah and Israel back from captivity and will rebuild them as they were before. I will cleanse them from all the sin they have committed against me and will forgive all their sins of rebellion against me. Then this city will bring me renown, joy, praise and honour before all nations on earth that hear of all the good things I do for it. And they will be in awe and will tremble at the abundant prosperity and peace I provide for it. This is what the Lord says. You say about this place, it is a desolate waste without people or animals. Yet, in the towns of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem that are deserted, inhabited by neither people nor animals, there will be heard once more the sounds of joy and gladness, the voices of bride and bridegroom, and the voices of those who bring thank-offerings to the house of the Lord, saying, Give thanks to the Lord Almighty, for the Lord is good, his love endures for ever. For I will restore the fortunes of the land as they were before, says the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In this place, desolate and without people or animals, in all its towns there will again be pastures for shepherds to rest their flocks. In the towns of the hill country, of the western foothills and of the Negev, in the territory of Benjamin, in the villages around Jerusalem and in the towns of Judah, flocks will again pass under the hand of the one who counts them, says the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfil the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days, and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord, our righteous Saviour. For this is what the Lord says, David will never fail to have a man to sit on the throne of Israel, nor will the Levitical priests ever fail to have a man to stand before me continually to offer burnt offerings, to burn grain offerings, and to present sacrifices. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. This is what the Lord says. If you can break my covenant with the day and my covenant with the night, so that day and night no longer come at their appointed time, then my covenant with David my servant and my covenant with the Levites who are priests ministering before me can be broken, and David will no longer have a descendant to reign on his throne. I will make the descendants of David my servant, and the Levites who minister before me, 
as countless as the stars in the sky and as measureless as the sand on the seashore. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Have you not noticed that these people are saying, The Lord has rejected the two kingdoms he chose? So they despise my people and no longer regard them as a nation. This is what the Lord says. If I have not made my covenant with day and night, and established the laws of heaven and earth, then I will reject the descendants of Jacob and David my servant, and will not choose one of his sons to rule over the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. For I will restore their fortunes, and have compassion on them. Jeremiah chapter 34 while Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, and all his army, and all the kingdoms and peoples in the empire he ruled, were fighting against Jerusalem, and all its surrounding towns, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, Go to Zedekiah king of Judah, and tell him, This is what the Lord says, I am about to give this city into the hands of the king of Babylon, and he will burn it down. You will not escape from his grasp, but will surely be captured and given into his hands. You will see the king of Babylon with your own eyes, and he will speak with you face to face, and you will go to Babylon. Yet hear the Lord's promise to you, Zedekiah, king of Judah. This is what the Lord says concerning you. You will not die by the sword. You will die peacefully. As people made a funeral fire in honour of your predecessors, the kings who ruled before you, so they will make a fire in your honour and lament. Alas, Master! I myself make this promise, declares the Lord. Then Jeremiah the prophet told all this to Zedekiah king of Judah in Jerusalem, while the army of the king of Babylon was fighting against Jerusalem and the other cities of Judah that were still holding out, Lachish and Azekar. These were the only fortified cities left in Judah. The word came to Jeremiah from the Lord after king Zedekiah had made a covenant with all the people in Jerusalem to proclaim freedom for the slaves. Every one was to free their Hebrew slaves, both male and female. No one was to hold a fellow Hebrew in bondage. So all the officials and people who entered into this covenant agreed that they would free their male and female slaves and no longer hold them in bondage. They agreed and set them free but afterwards they changed their minds and took back the slaves they had freed and enslaved them again. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I made a covenant with your ancestors when I brought them out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I said, Every seventh year each of you must free any fellow Hebrews who have sold themselves to you. After they have served you for six years, you must let them go free. Your ancestors, however, did not listen to me or pay attention to me. Recently you repented and did what is right in my sight. Each of you proclaimed freedom to your own people. You even made a covenant before me in the house that bears my name. But now you have turned round and profaned my name. Each of you has taken back the male and female slaves you had set free to go where they wished. You have forced them to become your slaves again. Therefore this is what the Lord says. You have not obeyed me. You have not proclaimed freedom to your own people. So I now proclaim freedom for you, declares the Lord. Freedom to fall by the sword, plague and famine. 
I will make you abhorrent to all the kingdoms of the earth. Those who have violated my covenant and have not fulfilled the terms of the covenant they made before me, I will treat like the calf they cut in two and then walked between its pieces. The leaders of Judah and Jerusalem, the court officials, the priests, and all the people of the land who walked between the pieces of the calf, I will deliver into the hands of their enemies who want to kill them. Their dead bodies will become food for the birds and the wild animals. I will deliver Zedekiah king of Judah and his officials into the hands of their enemies who want to kill them. To the army of the king of Babylon, which has withdrawn from you, I am going to give the order, declares the Lord, and I will bring them back to this city. They will fight against it, take it, and burn it down, and I will lay waste the towns of Judah so that no one can live there. Father God, thank you that at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died on the cross for us. Amen. For more resources to help you bring the word to life, go to premier.org.uk forward slash Bible. This reading has been taken from the NIV Bible Biblica and is published by Hodder and Stoughton.